a lot of people are surprised about. A lot of people think that the people that are the dino PTs or the physical therapists that have the most amount of seniority, those are the ones that are most tired of seeing patients and that's not what the literature says. Why are there so many physical therapists experiencing burnout? I was interested to know because I was presenting at the Texas Physical Therapy Association annual conference to give a talk about burnout as well as non-clinical opportunities in physical therapy and I wanted to know what does the literature say about burnout and physical therapists. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Philip McGee. I am a physical therapist who works full-time in utilization review. And I looked at what the literature said, and there was a 2022 systematic review that was published by some authors from Duke University and they looked at what the common factors were for burnout in physical therapists throughout the world. And they looked at 46 different studies. 11 of those studies were from the United States and there were over 8,700 participants. What they found was that most of the risk factors for burnout were what they considered avoidable while there were four unavoidable ones, which were the number of years of clinical experience, gender, age, and the number of years working at a company. The other avoidable risk factors, there were 49 of them, and they broke those down into four different sections. 13 out of the 16 studies found that if you have less clinical experience, you're more likely to experience burnout which a lot of people are surprised about. A lot of people think that the people that are the dino PTs or the physical therapists that have the most amount of seniority, those are the ones that are most tired of seeing patients and that's not what the literature says. Those that have less experience at a job those are the ones that typically experience burnout. And they did show that males and those that are younger typically experience more burnout. However, those are almost 50-50. For the avoidable risk factors, they had one section as structural organizational, and that comprised of the majority of the avoidable risk factors. And what they found was Financial satisfaction was the most studied, and 12 out of the 13 studies found that those that had lower financial satisfaction were more likely to experience burnout. However, there was one study that found that those that had a higher financial satisfaction were experiencing more burnout, and what the authors concluded was it was most likely due to the people with the highest satisfaction are working the most so to be financially satisfied they're experiencing burnout from working so hard those that had a high workload that they had high productivity expectations that was consistent in having more burnout they found that also consistently those that didn't like the company's organizational structure they were most likely to experience burnout and those that were working more hours, eight out of the nine studies showed they were experiencing burnout. I was surprised to find that high documentation demands, only four of the studies that they found actually looked at that. I would have expected that to be much higher. The second category they looked at was psychological emotional, and they found that those that do not like the people that they work with which is unsatisfactory work relationships, it was consistent that those were the ones experiencing burnout the most. Those that had a poor emotional investment or coping strategies, they were consistently having more burnout. And those that didn't feel like they were getting support from management, they were most likely experiencing burnout. The environmental 
risk factors, it was more likely if you worked in the acute setting that you would experience burnout, but it's only eight out of the 14 studies, it's almost 50-50. They did find consistently those that didn't have adequate staffing or those that didn't have the resources that they needed to do their job, those were consistent with experiencing more burnout. And the last socio-demographic, they found that it was consistent if you didn't have a partner, that you were either single, widowed, or divorced, you were more likely to experience burnout. And those that had poor health, they were consistent with having burnout. So to summarize, those that were consistently having the highest burnout were those that didn't like the people that they worked with, that they had high productivity expectations, that they didn't have the staff or the material resources that they needed, they didn't feel supported by management, and they didn't like the way that the company they worked for was organized. I would say, though it wasn't always consistent, those that had the highest sample size with burnout were those that had the lowest financial satisfaction, that they were working the most hours, and those that were working in the hospital setting. It is interesting to note that there was also a systematic review this year that looked at healthcare providers in the US and what is most predictive of burnout and anxiety was the only one that was consistent, that at least had moderate level evidence. But they also found that there was moderate level evidence that showed that marital status was not a predictor of burnout, which is contradictory to what was found in the PT literature, that they found that those that had strong leadership were less likely to experience burnout. Those that felt they had good job autonomy were less likely to experience burnout. Those that didn't have a good work-life balance were more likely to experience burnout. And the two things they found that was protective against burnout was a perceived control and having good social support. I hope that you found this information helpful. I'm going to provide future videos that discuss what the literature says about how to improve burnout. In the meantime, if you look at what are the most common reasons for burnout, you'll see that most of those are going to be organizational and not so much individual. So there are things that you can do on an individual basis to improve burnout, but a lot of what the literature is going to say is that you need to have organizational changes in order to reduce burnout. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next video.